Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I am going to be going through all of the events that have happened, like the, the main ones that st stuck out to me in the past 24, 36 hours, and there's a lot of Big Ten stuff, some not, but let's just get started, get right into it. And the first thing that is kind of shocking here, and a lot of this video is about recruitment, is Quinn Ewers reclassifying for the 2021 class, making him the number one um, prospect in that class, the number one recruit. And this means that Ohio State has two five-star quarterbacks entering, 20, um, entering the 2021 season, which is um, it's awe-inspiring. Aw Absolutely awe-inspiring. And this also means that Ohio State, according to 24-7 Sports, holds the record for um, the av the highest average um, ranking for a com for all commits. It's like, it, it, it's crazy high. And um, personally, my take on this is I, Edwards is most likely doing it for the I'd say the money, regardless of what he's saying. And sure, it might be made out that he wants to compete early, but why Why compete early? You're getting there later than anyone else. You obviously have great talent. There's no denying that. But everyone else already has likely a head start at the playbook, knowing your other players. And Stroud is still going to be the likely starter unless things go south early in the season, which with their wide receiver core, I don't see how that's going to happen, even with the simply above average quarterback and you still have Kyle McCord and Jack Miller to get through and what this means is that someone possibly even hours if somehow things go bad for him someone's going to transfer one of those quarterbacks is probably before the regular season ends is going to be announced out of the program it would not it would it wouldn't shock me at all so again hours i think likely doing it for the money also skipping his senior year or completing it early but like all of that really i mean you're kind of taking away a year of that extra high school development and you're going to be put in the nfl draft sooner so i mean maybe that's not a huge deal again i'm not like i'm not the greatest expert here but it kind of just rubs me in an odd way but that's partially because i've never seen or heard of anyone doing this we're entering a completely new and confusing era of college football which gets me to another point because of jaheem singletary's decommitment and we'll get to this in a few seconds or a minute penn state is the number one recruiting class penn state you know the school that last year had an ab abysmal recruiting class by um the fact that i think they were in the bottom half of the big 10 or just like seventh um recruiting class in the big 10 abysmal for penn state numbers they're the number one recruiting class in 2021 it's with a with a 90.47 an average rating according to 24 7 sports composite it's um it's crazy i mean just in all honesty it's it I never thought I'd see that happen, ever. And good for Franklin and good for Penn State, because with 24 commits, despite the fact that that means that Penn State will likely drop in these rankings, I'd say certainly drop in these rankings, they can now focus more on the commits, the last few prospects they want to get, and focus on 2023. They're a step ahead of themselves, and that's going to be important for Franklin, not only in the offseason, but in the regular season as he looks to rebound from a 4-5 and five season in 2020. And back to Jaheim Singletary, this decommitment, decommitment from Ohio State has bumped them down to the number three recruiting class in 2022, and Jaheim Singletary is listed. He's still mainly crystal balled to ohio state for now um however georgia and miami are listed now as the main competitors and this is because the crystal ball thing i think is mainly because this decommitment just happened like today i believe is when it just happened in ohio state and interestingly enough michigan are listed as minor or cool interests which to me i mean it'd be awesome if we could get another five-star secondary guy um especially if harbaugh somehow you know pulls out a miracle and doesn't get fired this season it'd be awesome to see us building an elite 
uh, an elite, talented secondary. Doubt will get him, honestly, because he's in Florida, and Miami and Georgia will are, I'd say, ni- I'm 99% sure it'll come down to those two schools that will obtain him. And then last but certainly not least, um, I just read this like 10 minutes ago, Ed Orgeron announced that Miles Brennan is out indefinitely due to an arm injury, and Max Johnson is therefore likely going to step in as the starter for LSU, a team that, like Penn State, is looking to rebound. And this is probably taken as bad news, as Miles Brennan, I think, was the projected starter for LSU. So a good news for Penn State looking forward, bad news for LSU looking forward. Um, let me know your thoughts on all of this below. What do you think about Elwers and rolling early? Where do you think Jaheim Singletary will go? Do you think Max Johnson will somehow prove to be the better choice now that Brennan is injured somehow? Or do you think this sets LSU back? And do you think Penn State is now on a new level of recruitment? Or is this just some odd coincidence coupled by Jaheim's decommitment Edwards reclassifying and the fact that Penn State has an, um, a massive amount of commitments for being this early still in the class recruitment period. Tell me your thoughts below in the comments. Like and sub to this video if you enjoyed it and check out some of my other content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys around.